Andy, you said at the beginning of your news conference that this might not be the most exciting news you've ever announced, and yet it's important news for people who have a lot of different airplanes concerning a, an STC and an, an approved model list. That's correct. What we've been doing is expanding our STC for installing ADSB equipment in certified airplanes based on trig transponders and a whole variety of different GPS solutions, different navigators or standalone GPSs. We've been plugging away at this for about four years and over that time we, we've been adding different combinations. One of the things that people maybe don't realize is that in order to certify an ADSB out solution you have to actually do a whole lot of analysis and a flight test with every combination you want to do. So if you want to do a Trig TT31 transponder and a GTN650, you have to actually put one of those together in an airplane with a, a proper install, sign it off, go fly it, collect data, submit that to the FAA, and you end up with the final result some weeks or even months later. And the same thing has to be done for every combination that we've done. So this has been, I wouldn't say a, a, a labor of love, but certainly a labor as getting all of the different combinations out there. You also have to do it in different kinds of airplanes. You have to do it in metal airplanes, non-metal airplanes, high wing, low wing, complex retractables, simple airplanes. And so we've had this whole program of flight tests and different combinations. And I'm really pleased to be able to say that we now think we've done the bulk of that work on our existing transponder line and have something like 600 different airplanes added to the AML. We have every likely combination of navigator and, and transponder in the panel. And we're really pleased about that. You've also got some new radios here. I know you announced these radios a couple of months ago, but it's the first time here at Oshkosh that people can actually put their hands on them, see them, touch them, feel them, play with the dials and what have you. Tell us about those radios a little bit. Sure. We have a new panel mount radio, which is the, actually we have two, it's the T196 or the T197. The only real difference between them is the power output. The first is a 10 watt radio, the second is a 16 watt radio. These are slimline, uh, very highly integrated radios. They have built-in intercom systems, built-in stereo music, built-in auxiliary inputs that allow you to connect to other things in the panel. So for a smaller airplane with a small stack, that radio can actually act as the hub of what you're doing. Obviously, it's a full-featured VHF comm radio. It has dual watch, so you can listen to the second standby channel at the same time as being on the primary, and a whole host of other features. Quite a nice database feature, actually, that you can update yourself on your own laptop and fill in the database for your local area. They will be shipping at the end of this year. And the audio panels is another thing that you've got at your booth and people can have a look at? Absolutely. We also have a, a new range of audio panels. We have a, two different ones, the entry-level version and then a more full-featured version. They allow standard switching between the different radios. If you have two radios, nav system, that kind of stuff, you need an audio panel. Our new audio panel matches the trig philosophy. It's straightforward, it's simple, it's easy to use, but it has all of the capabilities that you need. The TMA45 includes a Bluetooth interface that allows you to interface a telephone or an iPod and get the music and you can listen to tunes while you fly along. The TMA44 doesn't have the Bluetooth, it's a more straightforward panel, and for the simpler airplanes that would be a good choice. Are you finding that as we get closer to the 2020 deadline that people are really finally starting to take this seriously, that 2020 is going to come, the deadline's not going to be extended, and they need things like your company produces to help them equip for 2020? We are. There is now a growing move towards actually biting the bullet and getting it over with. And the other thing, and it kind of goes back to our STC expansion, there is now a whole lot more different choices out there, not just from my company, but from all of the vendors. There's been a lot of backroom work going on to try and make different combinations work together so that the, the pilots have a choice, they can equip, and that excuse, therefore, in a sense, has gone away. The, I can't do it because, it's, because it doesn't fit what I have. We've taken that away, and now, yes, the momentum is starting to build, and people are not now starting to say the kind of, yeah, you were serious about that. We really do have to do it. So actually, I'm going to remind everybody, it's December 2019, even <laughs> though we all call it the 2020 mandate, and that's 53 months away. Aero TV is brought to you by... Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com.